Hi guys, my name is Adam Lucero, and today I'm going to be talking to you, talking with you about analyzing climatographs. So to start, we need to learn how do we read a climatograph. So if you look at this one here, the local city in Denver, Colorado, we can see that this top line represents the average monthly temperature. So if we've never visited Denver, we can obviously see that the hottest month is going to be July, with temperatures in the 70s. And in January, it's going to be the coldest month, where it's just a little bit above 20 degrees on average. On the bottom, these bar graphs represent the, end, the average monthly precipitation. So in the spring, we have very moist weather, and in the winter, we have dry weather. So all the data is collected here for us, but is it really a true representation of what the weather and the climate is actually like? So let's compare the climate graph with two photos from Denver. So this top photo is of Denver during the summer. The climate graph says that we should have hot temperatures with a fair amount of moisture. So when we look at this photo, we see clear skies, and we see the Rocky Mountains that are pretty dry. That's an indicator of this high temperature. Most of the snow is probably melted by this point. We also see vegetation that's pretty lush and pretty green. So it's fair to say that there's warm temperatures that are preventing it from freezing and also that there's enough moisture that they got during the spring months to keep this vegetation alive. When we look at the second photo at Denver during the winter, it also reflects what the climate graph tells us. With a lot of moisture on the ground, this precipitation in the form of snow, we know that it's probably pretty cold outside, at least enough to maintain the snow at its freezing temperature. We also see cloudy skies, and in the background, we see a lot of snow on the mountains. So it's pretty safe to say that this climate graph definitely reflects what the weather's actually like. So here in Colorado, we have the best of both worlds. We have these nice hot summers, but then we also have winters that are pretty cold. So how do we adapt to that? Just when I went through my car, I found a couple ways that we adapt every single day. So during the summertime, we use things like um, suntan lotion and maybe even flip-flops to kind of prevent the heat and the effects of that. During the winter, we dress warmer with hats and jackets, and we always have a nice paper on our car to prevent our car from icing over. So just by looking at a climate graph, we can get an idea of what it's like in that place before we ever even visit there. So let's just say that next year in February, I want to go to the NBA All-Star Game. Well, it's currently being held in Dallas next year. And since I've never been to Dallas, I can just look at a climate graph and get an idea of how I can prepare to visit. So in February, we can see that there's not a whole lot of precipitation. So we might need to bring something like an umbrella or a jacket. And the temperatures are also pretty cold. It's only about 40 degrees on average. So it would be safe to bring a jacket and not our flip-flops and our sun kind of ocean. So you can use a climate graph to forecast the weather. So you don't have to necessarily have to wait for the weather channel or for the news to let us know what it's going to be like. So now that we know how to read a climate graph, go out and find out how you can use a climate graph in your own life. Jackets.